Hello, my name is Eel, I play Vintage Cube, and today we've come here to do exactly that. As far as looking at this pack, there is one card that stands out to me the most, and that is Mox Jet. So I'm probably just going to take that. I hope everyone is feeling great today. I just woke up a few a few minutes ago. <laughs> I was going to say hours, but that's not true. <laughs> so, uh, and my room is pretty cold, so if you hear me teeth chattering or I say something stupid, it's because I'm tired of colds. But we're just going to start with Mox Jet. It's a great start. All right, in this pack, we see Skyclave Apparition is a great card. Phyrexian Metamorph goes in pretty much any deck. Ugin's a great late game uh, payoff. Bitter Blossom's good with Mox Jet. Also, like, Russian Import. I think I'm just going to take Metamorph. It kind of goes in any deck, uh, and I'd like to stay open. Yeah, we're just going to do that. One, two, three... Uh, how do you guys like the thumbnails? I my sometimes my favorite part of making these videos is making the thumbnails. They're so fun, like that pixelated style. I'm just in love with them. So I'm interested to see if you guys like them as much as I do. <laughs> I'm kind of in love with them. Uh, in this pack, balance is pretty strong. Exhume I like. Thirst for knowledge is good with Frexy Metamorph and with Mox Jet. Uh, Damnation is also good. It's pretty rare to get a Wrath effect. Uh. Balance just works well with Mox Jet. It gets a card out of our hand, and it's not a land. I could end up playing, like, Mono... Hmm. This pack is actually interesting. It kind of lacks, like, a super strong direction. I could also take Rakdos Signet, and then I have two, like, black ramp cards. But then, at that point, I think I'd rather take Divination. Because maybe I'm playing, like, a black, like, control deck or something. I think I'm just going to take Balance. It's the strongest individual card, although taking Damnation or Exhume would put us more in black, but I think I'm just going to take Balance. Here we see some good stuff. We see Cro Croxa, which if you were with our last league, it was in our deck that performed pretty poorly, but I think that archetype is good. I think that deck was just bad. Um, that being said, we also see War on Power Stone. That's good with the Rakdos thing we just passed. It's also good with Balance because we'll end up with more lands in play than they have, so I'll probably just end up taking that. It also usually doesn't come around. There's also not like a ton of amazing stuff in here. There's like Storm Cold Serpent, which is cool. Leovold, if we do end up playing three colors, but probably not. Um, Fencer's great if we end up with blue, but I'm just going to take Warren Power Stone. Here we see Goblin Welder. We do have a bunch of artifacts already, so that could end up being good. We see a Savannah, which I don't think we're playing green, but maybe we do end up in green. Um... We see Elishnorn, which is a great payoff for all this mana. Uh, but casting Elishnorn usually isn't where you want to be. We're just take Winds of Abandon. Like maybe we end up playing like a blue, a blue white light tap out control deck. I think I like that better than speculating with Goblin Welder. I'm just gonna take Winds of Abandon. Here, okay, this is a really late Tundra. So I think that means that the like the blue white tap out deck is gonna be some sort of available. Um I think that's better than taking Caracas. Iona would be good. I would take Iona if it was in the card, but I'm just going to take Tundra. It's an amazing land. Here we see Spellseeker, Rift Wing, Git Probe. So Spellseeker is, prob is the strongest potential card. Like, it grabs balance, and having a three-mana play that grabs you balance is, like, super, super awesome. So I think I'm just going to do that. It's also really good if we end up opening, like, Ancestral or, like, uh, Counterspell or something. It It's deceptively very good. I do like Riftwing a lot, though. But I think being able to tutor up a Wrath is super, super useful. Uh, in this pack, we see Condemn Blade Splicer. So usually you don't want to play Balance in your creature deck because you're going to end up Wrathing your side of the board. But sometimes it's okay because you can end up Wrathing their hand. Um... So I might be supposed to take Condemn. I think it's between Condemn and Blade Splicer. I think I'm going to take Condemn. Three mana three mana plays we have a lot of already. I like Gideon here. That works well with Balance. I think better than Lyra. I would take both, honestly, but Gideon is really strong. Uh, here we'll just take Christian Import. I don't think we're playing any of these other cards. Uh, we could take Damnation. We might not be playing Blue. We might be playing like Blue Black Control. The other option is like Temple Garden could make a fetch better later on. So I think I'm just going to take Temple Garden. You will take Tithe Taker. It's good in a control mirror. Because uh, they kind of have to kill it twice before it like is completely gone. And then uh, 
it helps you it helps your turn be your turn which is nice we're going to put needle spires on the sideboard we'll take spirit of the labyrinth we might end up playing mono white it looks pretty open at the moment uh no great mono white cards yet though but um it does appear to be white seems to be pretty open so that's good Miss Pack, Ashiok continues to follow us wherever we go. Ooh, I love opposition. Maybe I'm playing, maybe I'll regret not taking Blade Spicer because if I take Geist of Saint Draft and opposition comes back, I'm going to end up playing like a, a blue white opposition deck. You know what? Let's do it. I'm going to take opposition actually because I think Geist is more likely to come back. We got Tundra super, super late, so I don't think anyone's playing those colors. That makes me wish I took Blade Spicer, but we do have a ton of three mana plays. So at least it's, it's more replaceable on the mana curve. Than Condemn is. Although we might end up like, since I think white is pretty open, we might end up getting path, like, past like path and source of plowshare, and then I won't be playing Condemn. So <laughs> I'll feel a little silly, but this is a, a pretty good start so far, I think. Having Tundra is really nice because it means that we can prioritize fetch lands pretty heavily. Because again, I like being able to cast my spells, even though magic doesn't like letting me cast my spells. I like casting my spells, so. We'll see. Opposition fits into a few different decks. My favorite is the green-blue deck because your mana dorks just turn into like threats, but it's also really good in blue-white because you have to play blue to cast opposition, and then white has like all the like create a bunch of tokens effects, like with spectral procession and stuff like that. Uh this pack is not that exciting. Narset grabs us opposition, which I do like. It grabs us Gideon. Simic Signet ramps us into opposition, but it's also not a creature, so I don't care that much. I could see taking Ancient Tomb. That lets us play opposition faster. Elspeth the Conqueror's deck is probably the individual strongest card in the pack, but we we don't have anything good to reanimate. It would have to be from their library. I also like Ancestral a lot. just grabs us more cards, which I think our deck will be using cards a lot. We'll kind of just be dumping our hand. Uh, we can also take Time Warp. Time walk would be better because it's lower on the mana curve. Like five is a lot of mana to ask, but it is pretty good. I think I'm gonna take Ancestral only because Spellseeker grabs it. So just having more options with Spellseeker, although I would be fine getting back Time War Narset Ancient Tomb. Uh here, still no fetches, which is probably what I would take the highest. Mere Battle Sphere is great if we can get it in play. It's seven mana and we get five creatures for opposition, which I really like. Right, so let's just take Felidar Retreat. I think that's the best. It just turned lands into two twos and also puts pressure on them. I think that's great in the opposition deck. I think that's better than just a one mana two one or Yorion. Although we'd be fine getting back Kithian. Uh, but I'm just going to take Felidar Retreat. It's kind of like a Gideon. It's not as good as Gideon, but it is similar. Ooh, interesting that Primetime is this late. That's pretty weird to me because Creator Hearth is also in this pack, so... That is pretty weird to me. I'm just going to take Mana Tithe. Legion Landing is great, but it'll probably come back. And Mana Tithe is so much fun. And we can get it off Spellseeker. <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, So Seagate's good when you have, like, Ponder and stuff in your deck. And you can just turn Seagate into, like, a three mana, like, Divination that lets you scry. Uh, Certifying Race is probably one of the better swords because it replaces itself, um, which is really cool. But I think I'm just going to take Wall of Omens. Wall of Omens is actually good in the opposition deck because you just want creatures in play. So Wall of Omens is just going to sit there and do nothing, and eventually it's going to turn into a threat. Uh, here we'll take Giver Runes. It, re it protects our plays, and it's also another creature for opposition. I think that's better than Banishing Light. We haven't gotten any fetches yet. So that's like what I'm really looking for. Gideon is really strong. I do like Seasoned Hollow Blade, but I think I like Gideon better. Five mana asking for this Gideon is amazing and immediately impacts the board. This is an easy hero blade hold, I think. When it attacks, we get two more creature tokens. Unfortunately, they are tapped and attacking, but the following turn, we don't have to attack with those two. So we do get like two creatures a turn, which is really awesome. I'm just going to take hero blade hold. We did get guys back, which is awesome. We could also, if we didn't get that back, we could take scrubland. That would make fetches better in the future, but I'm just going to take guys. It is very good against certain decks. Certain decks just can't deal with it, and it puts a ton of pressure on them. And it's a hexproof opposition target, so if we have it in play, we have a guaranteed win unless they have a wrath to, to tap stuff down. So yeah, it seems like blue is not super open. It seems like white is super, super open. Ooh, Time Warp or Elspeth Conquer's Death? 
Elspeth conquers death. Honestly, with two planeswalkers, Felidar retreat, I think time warp might be better. It's a way that we can just randomly win the game. Elspeth conquers death is really, really strong though. But I think I'm gonna take time warp. Uh, we can also like during our first turn tap down all of our creatures to remove all their blockers, time warp ourselves, take another turn, and then like attack past all their creatures. That seems really cool. Here, I don't think this is a Yorion deck. We don't really have a lot of things to flicker that get an effect, so I'm just gonna take Kabian. Uh, we get Legion's Landing, which is awesome, and we get Usher the Fallen, which is also good. Uh, we'll keep Banishing Light. I'm not sure that we're playing it, though. Might not be playing Balance Game 1. Again, Balance in your creature deck is like pretty interesting. Disenchant's fine for the sideboard. Uh, so far, we have enough playables to play a deck, so really, the cards that we're taking, we need to think about whether they're better than the card that's already in our deck. So I will be super, super, super prioritizing fetches, because we our mana's already fine enough. Or, we already have enough playables. Mox Pearl is perfect. <laughs> that is awesome. We would love to get Monastery Mentor back. Uh, not that many people are in white, but usually that card doesn't come around. It's really strong. But that would be a great card to get back. But uh, Mox Pearl is perfect. And on a color Mox is awesome. Here, I think it's Brazen Borrower. Lingering Souls is great, but we don't have any black mana to flash it back. Uh... So we would have to like stretch our mana base a little bit more. We only have one dual land. Um, no fetches, nothing. I also do like Moldrifter. I like Jace, but Brazen Borrower, I'm pretty sure just has like a really high win rate. It kind of does it all. It threatens Planeswalkers. It's a 3-1 with Flying and Flash. You can bounce what they just reanimated. You can bounce their their thing they just Black Lotus out. It's Bouncing something is actually pretty good in this format because people are kind of investing multiple cards to bring one thing into play. Um, in this pack, I think I'm just going to take Elspeth. I really do like Azorius Signet, though. It is double on color Signet, which is pretty good. But we're more of like a aggro deck, like featuring opposition. And Elspeth gives us a 1-1 every turn for opposition. So I think I just I like that better. It also works well with Time Warp. We do end up playing Time Warp. So I think I like it. So far, no path, no, um... What's it called? Swords to Plowshare, which is interesting. If no one's playing white, I don't know why. Why they haven't been passed yet. So I haven't even seen him. Uh, we really want fetches. Pretty bad. Come on. Give us a fetch. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. We're just going to take the fetch. <laughs> I got what I wanted. Uh, Wigmare would be okay. Amir's Call would be okay. But I just want to be able to cast my spells. So our mana just got a little bit better. Now we functionally have a second duel in our deck. Ooh. Preordain is really good, but I don't know if it's what we're looking for in this deck. But I think it just has the highest win rate out of these cards. That being said, Consecrate Sphinx is a great, is a very strong card. Um, you play it, and unless they can kill it during their upkeep, especially if they're tapped out, um, you just it replaces itself and gives you an it nets you another card and then they have to spend a card to kill it so it's kind of like a three four one as long as they don't counter it and they don't and they can't kill it during their upkeep that being said brimaz is really good in our deck it has vigilance so it can attack and be used for opposition and we can get it out pretty early because of mox pearl yeah i think i i think i like that better than preordain and, and sphinx here no fetches teferi's pretty good we're not super Teferi deck though. It's, I'm looking at Smuggler's Copter. Smuggler's Copter is really strong in pretty much every deck ever. Hmm. We're not playing Dave Judgment. I don't think we're a Restoration Angel deck. Teferi does draw us more cards and is good with Time Warp. Doesn't give us any creatures in play though. Which is not my favorite. Smuggler's Copter works well with Balance. Ugh. I think I'm just going to take Smuggler's Copter. That might be wrong, but I don't think we want to vary in this deck. No fetches in this pack. We'll take Honor of the Pier, I think, over Lone Volo. Um, we actually might end up playing. I'm not 100% sure. Um, this pack, we'll probably just take Council's Judgment. It's just three mana exile anything. It doesn't leave like a Banishing Light in play. It doesn't anything. It's just gone. So it's actually pretty strong. I would take Flicker Wisp otherwise, but we're just going to take Council's Judgment. Some interaction. Ooh, we got Monastery Mentor back. That is awesome. 
<laughs> we have so many cards in our deck, but uh, we'll, make, we'll make cuts in a second. Uh, we'll take Lingering Souls. We're probably not playing it, though. It's a shame we don't have black mana. We didn't see Spectral Procession, unfortunately. I would have loved to see that card. Just three mana, put three 1-1s one in play. That's pretty good. We do have Usher of the Fallen, though, which is awesome. So you can get, you can get things into play like that. Recruiter of the Guard or Porcelain Legionnaire. Porcelain Legionnaire is probably the correct pick, but Recruiter of the Guard, we have so many things that we can tutor up. We can get Card Draw. We can get Geist. Is Monastery Mentor 2-2? Yeah, we can get Monastery Mentor. Uh, I think I'm just going to take Recruiter of the Guard. That might be wrong. Oh, I took Bone Shredder. <laughs> I don't know what just happened, but... I'll put Field of Ruin in the sideboard, I think, over Mutavolt. We'll take Restoration Angel, put it on the sideboard. Turn it off and in something. Okay, this deck seems pretty fun. I do love an opposition deck, so I'm not complaining. We don't have any we don't have path or swords to plot share, which I find interesting, since white seems so open. I wonder who took them. Usually you see at least one. They're like the premier white removal spell. Probably like the premier removal spell in general, but uh let's see. Could end up playing Revel Arc because we have a lot of things to get, but I don't think so. We're not playing Temple Garden, and then these are our lands. So we have one colorless land with Moxjet. I think that's fine since we have two duels. We have another colorless land with Bridge Import, so eh, maybe I don't know. Uh, so as far as what we're cutting, hmm. so I don't think I'm playing Warm Power Stone. That lets me untap and play Gideon, but we're not really playing anything past five mana. So I don't think that's good enough to like eat up our turn three. Uh maybe Feldar Retreat comes out. I only have one fetch. Feldar Retreat is really good when you have fetches. Although getting a 2-2 every turn seems really good with opposition. I mean I'm playing it. Maybe I'm supposed to be cutting things from the bottom of my, my mana. I don't think we're playing Spirit of Labyrinth. That's not great, game one. If we know that we're drawing a bunch of cards, then it'll be good. Uh, I don't think I can cut any of my three mana plays. I might end up cutting... Let's put this here. We might end up cutting Felidar Retreat. We're not playing Tezzeret. That, I was trying to take a different card, I think, and it took Tezzeret, so that's okay. I'm going to end up coming Philidor Retreat. We need to cut, like, two more, at least. Maybe three more. All right. I'm going to take a snippet of the deck, and then I will see you guys in round one. All right. Here we are in round one. We'll tell our opponents to have fun. And we won another die roll. We would love to go first. Uh, if you're new here, we win a lot of die rolls on this channel. I'm not sure why, but I'm not complaining. This hand's good. We have turn. We have both of our colors. First of all, we have turn one Kithian, and then we can Brazen Borrower their turn two play, and then turn three play out Brazen Borrower. So our ideal draw is probably another Plains. They're playing mono red. They are. We will chump them. We we'll yield. That is awesome. We're gonna block. We win the late game against mono red, so there's no rush to like try to kill ourselves. <laughs> Play island past the turn. If we'd rather council judgment what they play, we can do that too. They play nothing, which is perfect. We will play. So I could play Giver of Runes, or I could flash out Brazen Borrower. Uh, I think I like playing Giver of Runes. This lets me get the most value out of Brazen Borrower because I can petty theft whatever they play. And they might even just burn Giver of Runes here, which would be awesome. They do not. Frostedon is fine. We're going to bounce it with Brazen Borrower. And now we're at 20 life against Mono Red, and we're, we're playing an Elspeth, so I think we're going to be just fine. We're not going to hold up Mana Tight this turn. I really want to get down Elspeth and start plusing it. Uh, 
I don't see a reason to attack with Giver Runes. I don't think we're going to win by attacking with Giver Runes. I'd rather protect Elspeth in case they have like Hellrider or something. Ooh, I was right. Should we have our Soldier Pro Red? They can deal one damage to Elspeth if they want. And they do. We're going to block. Uh, I would like to cancel this judgment, but the issue is that it takes us off white, so we can't type them anymore. So what I think I'm going to do is play Smuggler's Copter, hold up Brazen Borrower. So we're going to attack them for one. We're going to plus Elspeth to get a 1-1. One, one. And then we will play Smuggler's Copter. That was the last thing I needed to do. We also just Council's Judgment this. I think I can wait one more turn. I think I'm going to be a little greedy. Because we can also kill Hellrider by crewing up Smuggler's Copter, giving it for red. Metamorphosis is fine. They need something to do. Looks like they have a white spell. Okay, they play Steamkin. We can't counter that. We will tie Thrasodon. That makes our Elspeth way worse, and we're also not going to get any more value out of Mana Tithe, most likely. See if they attack. Hopefully they do. They do not, which makes sense. We're going to draw for turn. We are going to crew smuggler's copter. And attack. Ooh, let me just hit my mic. <laughs> I'm going to discard Usher of the Fallen because we probably want to suspend Ancestral. They take three. They're going to plus Elspeth, kill their Hellrider, and then suspend Ancestral. And Ancestral. And then we are Hellbent. But our opponent has five lands and we're at 19 life and we have an Elspeth in play, so I feel pretty good. Our opponent plays nothing. We'll see what they do. If they had a burn spell, they'd probably burn Giver Runes, I'd imagine. We're just gonna chump and give it pro. Um because they're gonna they're gonna pump it, I'd imagine. I'd assume they have they have cards in their hand. <laughs> they're pro red. See what this is. Por Legion Porcelain Porcelain Legion is fine. Char is a little annoying. What are they hitting? They hit Giver Runes. That makes sense. You, know, you might just start racing them. Honestly, they're gonna end up taking a bunch of damage. We can balance their last card out of their hand. That makes us sacrifice no lands. It makes us sacrifice one creature. I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, that seems kind of random. Their last card might just be a land. Uh -huh. Although, if we do that, that means that we can chump chump. No, that seems stupid. I think I just want to race them here. So we're going to give our soldier token plus three plus three and flying. We're going to crew the copter. We're going to attack them for seven. So they're dead next turn. On board. Yield. Click to draw. Mox Jet is bad. We don't want that in our hand. Now we're definitely not going to balance right here. It seems kind of troll. 
So we can chump one of their creatures. They can't really kill Elspeth. We're at 19. We can flash in Brazen Barber. So we have we have lethal a few different ways. So I'm not sure what they could do to get out of this. They could like breach Emrakul and then I'll feel stupid for not balancing. Okay, we got there. Yeah, their slow is really their slow is or their start. Oh my god, I'm switching wrist. Their start was really slow. And it was just exacerbated by the fact that we brazen borrowed their turn three play when they didn't have a turn two play. That was like a huge tempo play being able to bounce that, which is why I love having Brazen Barber in my deck. It feels great. Feels absolutely great. Um here. What do we change? I might hmm. might not be changing anything it is a little awkward that they have a uh, rampaging frostodon when our deck is just trying to put a bunch of creatures in play so <laughs> that's unfortunate i have lost games to um to brimass before not to rampaging frostodon but to massacre worm because if it just didn't create another one one i wouldn't have taken two more damage from combat and die um because it brimass is not a may ability you have to put a one one in or, or blocking rather not attacking so like, I would be able to chump normally and just take two, but since it's Brim as uh, I have to chump and take four off of Massacre Room, which is not good. Uh, Opposition honestly isn't great against Mono Red. Like, just the physical card, because they're trying to go so much faster. Whereas, like, Opposition is more of, like, a snake situation, like, you're slowly choking them out. The only card I could see bringing in is Condemn. Like, if that's more early interaction... And it gains them life, so if they have Frost on a play, they actually don't even gain any life. I think I like that better than Balance, I guess. Balance seemed pretty bad there. Alright, we'll run it like this. But keep in mind that Condemn is in for Balance. We'll see if Balance would have been better. I'm already sketch about having Balance in this deck in the first place, so we will keep... This actually would be a great Balance hand. <laughs> But it's a great condemn hand too. We are missing blue, but we also don't have any blue cards in our hand. And they're leading on Mutavolt, which is awesome. And we have mana type. I think I just want to tithe them and then next turn go Legion Land and Giver Runes. We don't really have a purpose to having Giver Runes out in play, and I'd rather counter their turn two spell if they have one. If they don't have one, we can just play Legion Landing next turn and tithe. Yeah, this is perfect. Again, we win if this goes late, so we're trying to slow down the game as much as possible. We draw another land, which is cool. It's not blue, but that's okay. We're going to play Giver Runes and Legion Landing. And then next turn we can Brimaz. Which is really good against Mono Red. It's for toughness, so they can't just bolt it. And it blocks things super well, and it gives you value for blocking and attacking. It's just pretty gross. They're going to animate Mutavolt, which is fine. We're not going to block. We'll just take two. If they're animating Mutavolt as their turn three play, that's exactly where we want to be. We will take it. That is fine. We don't, we can't do anything about it, but eating a burn spell, basically Giver just gained us three life, which is what we want. I think I'm going to play Rishan Import. This does give them more information about what we're doing, but if we end up drawing a blue source, we're going to want to suspend Ancestral and Rishan Import. And so we can flip Legion Landing next turn um, because of Brimrass and our, our Vampire, if we so choose to. So we are, we do only have like one more action spell in play unless we draw land, but with Brimaz in play and us being at 19 life, and we're going to have four, four lands in play, I feel pretty good. What is this? This member? That is pretty good. Can't stop it, obviously. It's one of the few ways they can, they can kill it, but our 1-1 one -one with lifelink is racing just as hard as Mutavolt because we're gaining one life and they're just dealing two to us, so... We're actually like doing okay. Kithian's a fine draw. We can give it indestructible. We can also just tap down their Mutavolt. So we need to set a stop on their upkeep. I think we're just going to port down Mutavolt. I don't see them needing more red sources and that's like what their bottleneck is and they're i don't think they're going to just animate mutable when we have this in play so 
I do want to port them to take them off a mana. But Manamorphosis is fine. Deferred Arcanist gets back Chain Lightning. So that is something to note. It does have Trample, which is kind of annoying. We get Usher of the Fallen, which isn't exactly what we want, but it is better than another planes, I guess. Uh, so if we port them down, we can't give Kithy an indestructible. But because we played Usher the Fallen, we can't give it Indestructible and Cast Condemn. So, yeah. What is better? I think I'm just going to port them. Once Arcanist gets back Chain Laning, that's like the best Arcanist is going to be for a while. Let's see what they do. Thinking about like bolting one of our creatures. If we had, if one of these lands was a blue source, we would have like ancestral like next turn, uh, but that's okay. We are going to port them down. This takes them off like any five mana dragons or anything. Um, we honestly might not condemn Dreadhorde, right? Like Dreadhorde attacking gets back Chain Lightning, and it is scary like as a loose end, but if they don't play any more one mana plays, like it's just going to be a dead card on the battlefield. They're going to get back Chain Lightning. They get to choose if they want to cast it or not. They're going to kill Usher the Fallen, which is fine. That's probably the best target for them to kill. We'll not pay, and we'll just take two. We'll take one, rather. I'd rather condemn like their, their Hellrider that they're going to play the following turn. <laughs> Brazen Bar with no blue mana is pretty interesting. Um, we're just going to attack with both. Don't know of any red flash creatures, so... We're gonna upkeep port them again. Leave up condemn in case they hellrider. Char on Kithian is pretty annoying. But they are really low now. They do not attack, which makes sense. They are a much lower life total than us. We're just gonna play Felidar Retreat. Uh makes all of our lands and stuff better. Next turn, we can just take one turn off again. We're at 18 life, so I'm not really in, in danger of them like playing Hellrider or no, no, we lose. Uh, so our ideal draw is probably just like a blue source, <laughs> and then we can Brazen Borrower plus Port plus Condemn, and we also get a 2 2 out of the process from Felder Retreat. We can also grow our Vampire to make it give it more life link. A fetch would be perfect, that would be ideal because then we'd get a 3 3 and a 2 2 with life link. That sounds awesome. So this copter is fine. It's a card that we can cast, which I like. But other than that, pretty unremarkable. We are going to pass. I don't think denying them one mana is going to matter at this point, but we would like to keep port up slash condemn up in case they do animate mutable and try to attack. We can tap it down. Or if we need to condemn something with haste, like Hazorite. Trying to burn rage is pretty annoying, but we do have Brazen Borrower, so it's actually not that not that bad. I'm assuming they're not gonna attack. Yeah. Turn their end step, we're gonna just port down the read vault. Planes is fine. Uh I think this one we're just gonna make a cat. So play our land. Create a two two cat beast. Yield. I think we're going to tap our vampire here. 
It might have been, actually, it was probably correct to attack first because we might have drawn Holy Source off of the Smuggler's Copter, which would be really good. We will yield. We're probably going to get rid of Ancestral Recall. I don't see the game going that late with their life total at 9. We're going to get rid of Ancestral. If we go down to 6. They can't block. They might have like a burn spell and they're debating whether or not they want to. And then main phase 2, we can just Elspeth plus and then keep up Condemn and that we should we shut it after that. Last turn. Chronic Burning Rage goes up to one, which is fine. We don't have port right now. We flame slash. That's fine. Animate Mutavault, that's fine. Oh, they're getting back Flame Slash. I forgot about that one. So this means that they can kill Elspeth if we don't condemn their Mutavault. So I think I'm just going to do that because they have Shrine of Burning Rage. So if I condemn their Mutavault, they actually can't kill Elspeth unless they have another card in their hand that does something. This does put them up to 8 though, but I think I like dealing dealing 4 to them and killing 4 this turn. And if we get a land, we can deal 7. Ugh, not what we were looking for, unfortunately. So I'm probably just going to plus... Elspeth, crew one, we'll crew the vampire, that, put them down to five, we might just kill it honestly with Sharon, right, they don't which is awesome because we really need to loot, <laughs> it is pretty bad, we'll discard Mox and we get Gideon, so that should be pretty good. Looks like they are shrining. I don't know why they let us draw if they were going to shrine anyways. It's kind of random. But uh, we're not complaining. We're going to play our... I'd like to keep up one white. And then we're going to play Gideon. Zero Gideon. That, sh that should lock it up. I'm not sure what they could have in their, their last two cards. Breach Emrakul would do it. <laughs> Actually, would it do it? It would be very good. All right, they played an eighth land in mono red. That's that's feels pretty bad. You don't want eight lands when you're playing mono red. Um, your curve kind of ends at like three or four, maybe five if you have like zealous in your deck. But drawing eight mana, I do feel bad for our opponent. That's not really what you want. But they got good value off of dreadhorde, so that card was actually better than I thought it would be. Uh, I will see you guys in round two. All right, here we are in round two. I'm gonna tell our opponents to have fun. We didn't win the die roll, but that's okay. Can't win them all. We will keep, we have all of our colors, and we have an equal mix of lands and creatures, which is perfect. Our opponent molds to six, which is, you know, I'm not the patron saint of magic online, I'll take it. This hand, I think what we do is we just hold up mana tithe over and over again, and we can we have enough lands to be able to play, like, just from, from one land behind. Like, if they do nothing turn two, we can just Kithian. Mom? Interesting, so it looks like we're playing a mono white mirror. Which I think favors us. We'll find out though. We'll play planes and pass. If they play nothing, we can just play Kithian and then keep holding up Brazen Barber. Looks like they will be not attacking my farm, which makes sense. We are going to play Kithian, still holding up Mana Tithe. Looks like we're playing very similar decks. <laughs> so we'll see if the spicy opposition tech comes out. Looks like they're still doing nothing. I'm gonna play another planes and play wall of omens. I'm 
I'm still just trying to type them. Okay, and we got to. Let's go. Too good. Fortunately, mom is kind of like cock blocking us right now. <laughs> we can't really kill it, which makes us not able to attack with Kithian. So I'll probably just ancestral myself and then next turn kill whatever they play and then maybe brazen borrower. Hopefully they don't play a creature because that makes mom actually is pretty good against against what we're trying to do at the moment, but that's okay. We have an ancestral in play. They don't. We play nothing, which is interesting. We will auto yield to ancestral. I'm gonna play land. I think we're gonna play honor of the pier. This makes it so that way Kithian can't attack their mom, um, but I don't see a reason to do that right now. We're just gonna give it pro. Hmm, maybe I do that. Where do I left? No, because it means that we wouldn't be able to time work next turn, and I can't hold indestructibly up on Kithian, so I think we're just gonna do that. Okay, I feel much better about not doing that. <laughs> that would have been pretty troll. Attacking my Kithian into that. So we do have a 4-4. Four, four. Ancestral cost 4 to animate? Okay, 5. Let's see what they do. Attack us for 4, which is kind of annoying. I can try and Brazen Borrower it. I don't know how good that is, though. I think what I do is I try to Brazen Borrower the Mom, and then I can Exile it next turn. Because either they tap mom to give it hexproof, or they have to replay mom, and then I get to dodge like a turn of it. They're probably going to target itself to make our our yeah, so it doesn't go on on an adventure, which is fine. To take our turn, our ancestral is ticking down, which is cool. Opposition. I think I'm just going to Council's Judgment. That's why I went for Petty Theft, but Opposition is going to be great in the future. So we can Time Warp ourselves next turn in order to get our Ancestral faster, which I like. But we're just going to do this. XL Archangel, hopefully. Get him a counter spell. And then Mono White deck. <laughs> going to get rid of Archangel. And then if they play nothing next turn, this opposition is going to be great. Please don't flash out another creature. Gush is fine. Could be worse. <laughs> You're more scared of a counter spell. Because playing opposition and then getting to time warp with opposition in play seems pretty good. This is actually fine because we can just opposition down their flyers. Yeah, I think we're going to be okay. That was a good draw for them, but... Two, three, yeah, we're just gonna opposition this turn. They can give one of them pro blue, so we will take eight, but there's really no way to stop that. The opponent is absolutely flooding out though. But they do have Celestial, so not like they don't have things to do. Tap down, tapping down Wall of Omens. They're probably going to give it Pro Blue if I had to guess. Okay, they don't. They're probably going to give this one Pro Blue then. Yep, that makes sense. How much is this on one? Yeah, okay, so. I think Monastery Mentor would have been play would have been cool, it would have given us another creature, but we kinda had to opposition, so. Take four. They don't animate Celestial Colonnade, which is interesting. Maybe they don't want us attacking them. Thalia is pretty good. It makes us pay for our draw. And they did get Monastery Mentor, which is pretty annoying. That was actually good draws from our opponent. Thalia is gonna be pretty brutal here. We're going to cast it. We do have to pay one, though, which sucks, because of Thalia. It means that we can't actually time warp this turn, most likely. Yeah. 
<sighs> All right, this is gonna be more. It's gonna be a more interesting game now. The opponent said to be a meanie head. Uh, we might be fine. So we're gonna play island, play giver of runes plus monastery mentor, and then next turn we get to time warp. That should be like a huge tempo play. Hopefully we fade one more draw would be ideal. Uh, we might upkeep upkeep tap down their colonnade. Does that make sense? We kind of have three creatures we can afford to to use. I think I'll probably just wait until they go into combat. I'll make them wait to go into combat. Opponent enters combat. We're going to tap down Colonnade first, I think. So even if we try to tap down the angel, we're going to end up taking four. So I think I'd rather just, I guess I'll just tap down. It's probably better if I try to tap down the angel, actually. So they have to give it probably when they're in response, so I can just tap it down again. So we do take four. It's kind of unavoidable. When it does attack, which I do like, because we have time warp. Hopefully, I don't have a counter spell. That would be bad. Because then we can just like bully them next turn. All right, this is a creature that we can just tap down with opposition, which is great. So we're going to tap down Soulfire Grandmaster with this. Do you have to pay six to time warp, but. All right, and we got there. <laughs> our opponent concedes we should just be able to kill them during our next turn. They're going to take a ton of damage. Uh, they end up taking like six, seven, eight, and then next turn we get to like Smuggler's Copter, which gives us another prowess trigger on two of our creatures. Like we should just kill them. Uh, them playing Soulfire Grandmaster makes me think that they have Time Walk in their deck, which is a really good combo. It's notable to see that they didn't have any counter spells, so I probably shouldn't play around counter spells if I can. Uh, as far as what we're bringing in, I <laughs> balance might end up being good here. We're both playing very similar decks, and being able to balance buys us time. Do we win the late game though? Mm, this is hard. Because what was their what was their issue? Like balance lets us deal with like a monastery mentor, which is going to be one of the ways that we lose. I think, do I like Condemn better than that? Hmm. I got also bring in Spirit of the Labyrinth. We only saw one gush from them, and we only have, and we have Ancestral, so that does hurt us a little bit. I also bring in Revel Arc. That seems stupid. I could bring in Turnabout to like Cryptic Command, tap down their creatures, and then like win the game like that. <laughs> that seems kind of funny. Uh,. I think I will play balance. I think that means I'm taking out something. Such as I think I'm gonna take out Usher of the Fallen, maybe, because Kithian can flip. See if I regret that. I think I'm gonna run it like that. I 
opponent gets to choose if they want to go first or second. They snap keep. Oh my god. Oh, they mold really fast. Sand isn't great, but we do have Wall of Omens as a redraw, and we do have like stuff to do. We are missing blue mana. But I think this hand's keepable. It's not ideal, but it's okay. Okay, they don't have turn one mom. They have something better. <laughs> I have turned one Kithian, and that is not a land, but that is okay. I'm going to play a Kithian. That they impulse, which is fine. It's card neutral. They do have a huge tempo lead on us, though. They have three lands in play, and we have one. Sort of Fire Nice is fine. They can just Brazen Bar whatever they equip it to. We don't have a land, we're just going to Wall of Omens. Even if we do have a land, we'll probably like Legion's Land and place Wall of Omens. Okay, we're casting Wall of Omens. <laughs> we're going to attack first. We can Winds of Abandon their play, even if we don't draw land in the next two. We did draw land, which is awesome. Wasn't in blue land, but that's okay. So they, they have like more permanents to play than us, but their issue is they have less cards in hand than us. So if they play a land here, they go down to three cards in hand, and we have five, we have six cards in hand. So Winds of Abandoning this early usually isn't great, but I think I'm just gonna do it if they play like pretty much any creature. Yeah, that's something we're gonna want Winds of Abandoning. Because that's fine. That's gonna hit us with sort of Fire Nice, which is pretty bad. Alright, to draw land, which is good. I'm going to do it pre-combat so that way we can attack them with Kithian. Can't cast without reload. We're going to exile their selfless spirit, which is good. They're F6, so I'm pretty sure they don't have days. So I don't, I don't see reason to even think about <laughs> playing around days with this Legion's Landing. But we're not going to do that anyways because we want to play Hero next turn. We play Legion's Landing. And unfortunately, Wall of Omens isn't just an O4, it's an O4, it's a Fender. Otherwise, we could flip our Kithian and our Legion's Landing next turn. We could just attack with our O4, but it has Defender, so we can't do that. Gideon is pretty good. I'm assuming he's going to plus. Buys them a lot of turn. Oh, they just kill our Kithian? Interesting. We are just going to play our Hero Blade Hold. You're going to attack their Gideon. I can't see them minusing Gideon on a vampire token, so Gideon was actually a good draw though. It buys them a lot of turn a lot of time. We would love to draw a blue source for a brazen borrower. Because then we can brazen borrower their sword like in combat. Kind of make an SE for him. Okay, if they do plus Gideon, which makes sense. Hopefully their hand is just two lands. That would be awesome. Probably not though. They're gonna click us. I'd imagine they probably take Brazen Borrower or nothing. They're not going to take Ancestral. I don't think they're going to take Evergreens. They take nothing. That makes sense. If we draw a Blue Source, it's going to be really good because we can Brazen Borrower, Sort of Fire Nice. Blue Source? Mm, not exactly what I wanted, but that's okay. Uh, this does mean that Hero Blade Hold is probably gonna die, but I can't really stop it. So I guess we're just gonna we're gonna do what we do. <laughs> Us taking five and then drawing a card and shooting something is pretty pretty upsetting, but we'll manage. They're going to attack both creatures. They have to attack Gideon. So we're going to put the 1-1s one -ones on the stack first, and then the battle cry. So they block our hero of Blade Hold. That would kill Gideon. If they block... If they block one of our soldiers, that would deal 1-2-3... Four, five, six, seven. So we can send one of them. No, we have to send them all at Gideon. Because otherwise they just block Gideon. Or they block your blade hold and save Gideon. We want to kill Gideon. So we're gonna attack like that. They're actually not in a great spot. 
But we actually didn't flip our Legion's Landing. I didn't think it worked that way, but... So Gideon should be dead. But they can choose between trading Vendillion with Hero Blade Hold or just warring one of our tokens, which I think is what they're going to do because they kind of need to draw off Sword of Fire Nice. Yeah, that makes sense. So Gideon is dead, which is awesome. They have one card in hand. They do get a redraw with their sword. But we do get to play Giver Runes, and we get to tap down one of their blue sources. So they're not in ideal shape. It would be really cool if we could have drawn a, a blue source, but we're doing okay. Here of Blade Hold was a great, great draw. Let's see if they do. I'm assuming they kill Giver Runes. They're sort of Fire Nice trigger. Can't block, we have no flyers. Playing out Giver Runes lets us flip Legion's Landing next turn, which is going to be good. Kind of need stuff to do with our mana. Drew another planes, which is good. So we do really want a blue source here. Fingers crossed. Council's Judgment. Okay, so if they have Archangel Avacyn, we lose our hero of Blade Hold. But we could exile the sword or their Avacyn. I don't see a reason to cast Council's Judgment pre-combat. That makes no sense. And I don't see a reason to not attack. I think just let them hitting us with Vendillion click over and over again seems really bad. So I think we're just going to attack. It lets us flip Legion's Landing, and we just really hope that they don't have Archangel's Avacyn. That would be pretty bad. Two, four, five, yeah. And we can't port them pre-combat to make them cast it pre-combat because they actually have six mana. So we're going to do this one last, then this one, then this one. Let's see if they have it. If they don't, I think they're just dead. We're going to take so much damage. Oh, we got a special offer. <laughs> They have something that's six mana? What's this? Okay, Shark Typhoon. I did not anticipate that. That was a great play, too. Again, not much to do about that. I don't think not attacking is the play. They do take a ton of damage here still. They do get to kill a Hero Blade Hold, so maybe that would have been a reason to do it, but we probably still would have attacked anyways. Um, we can port them. We can Council's Judgment. They're sort of Fire and Ice. We can Council's Judgment. They're 4-4. Four, four. We can also just not Council's Judgment yet, which lets us Adanto. This is Adanto plus Port. Oh, this is hard. I think I am supposed to Council's Judgment something now. Kind of in danger, though. We really need a blue source. I think I'm going to get rid of Sword of Fire Knights. It gives them less draws. And then if we draw a blue source, we can just bounce their Shark, and then we're in good shape. Actually, I didn't need to play the land, but that's okay. We get to tap down another one of their blue sources. We did draw something to do. The land is pretty good, so we can't bounce their shark token anymore. So we are in danger. <laughs> they have seven points in the in the air. We can attack them for three here if we want. We are not dead on board next turn, but the turn after. Blue land. I'm trying to think what creature we would want to draw. Rimaz is awesome, actually. So we are just going to hit them down three. We'll play Brimaz. It's probably our best play. Actually, uh, a blue source would have been really great because they actually don't have blue mana to, to Glen. Because they tapped weird. Did they do something else that cost mana? Why did they tap five? So they do go down to five, but I think they got it. But Brimaz was an okay draw. Do we port down one of their blue sources? Oh, they, they tap five because we ported down their blue source, so that makes sense. You're going to six. 
We are not just dead yet, but they have a ton of great draws. The blue source was honestly fine, because now we can't port down their blue source and prevent them from countering our Brazen Borrower. They attack us for 7, which makes sense, because if we go... Oh, they're not attacking? Okay. I feel like attacking for 7 makes sense. That puts us down to 4, so if we don't find a way to kill the shark, we're just dead. See what we draw. Tundra is a blue source, which I do like. I'm going to play Tundra. We're going to attack. They have to block Brimaz or they're dead. And then we get to kill their shark and then they attack us for four. So I think they got us. Unfortunately. Right? Is not attacking is not the play because we can bounce with Brazen Borrower while Glenn's ancest or Glenn's persist is on the stack, which is how we can sneak it, sneak in our Brazen Borrower activation. But they still have the one one Glenn and they still have the three one click, so I think they got us. They're going to go down to one if they have nothing. If they have Archangel Avacyn. They're they're even more fine. <laughs> It is unlucky. Honor of the Pure wouldn't have done it because I had Glenn activation, yeah. I'm going to block Brimaz. I'm going to let it die while it's on the stack. I'm going to Petty Theft back their shark. It's a shame if we had two blue, we could flash in Brazen Borrower and block. But uh, we can't do that. <laughs> So I think they got us. Oh, they conceded? You had lethal. What? You had lethal. What? Uh, am I missing something? We were at four life. They have four flying damage in play. This is why you never concede. I don't concede in any game I ever play. I don't concede in League. I don't concede in Magic. I don't concede in anything. Because, like, what am I going to do? I'm going to finish this League early and then play more Magic. So that doesn't make sense. Like, I might as well keep playing Magic. And once in a while, stuff like this happens. They literally, we are dead on board. They kill us. We lost this game. And instead of attacking, they just said GG and left. It's the mental difference. It's how you it's how you sneak out that little bit extra. It's how you improve whatever, whatever, whatever. But it's also just funny. Like this is why I never concede usually. Unless I'm like unless it's like a rap rap. But like the other reason is like they could show us another card out of their hand, which getting more information about their deck in a limited format is useful. But sometimes they just they just give you the win for no reason. Like they literally have four flying damage in play. We have no flying blockers. It's not like I can port down their creature. And they, they, I believe they know our last card in our hand because they clicked us, so they know it's ancestrals in our hand. So they literally know they know they they know they have the win. They know the card in our hand. They know they have lethal on board, and they know we have no blockers. But for some reason, they didn't attack us, and we won because of it. But like I always say, I'm not the patron of. Magic Online, Patron Santa Magic Online, so we'll take those. I'll see you guys in the third round. All right, here we are in round three in the finals. We'll tell our prompts to have fun. We won the die roll, which is awesome. We would like to go first. Here we have mana type. We have both of our colors. I would like to trade out like maybe this time warp for another land, but this hand's fine. We have both of our colors. We have Brazen Borrower and Mana Tithe, so we have a bunch of tempo plays. So hopefully they're playing like an aggro deck. They're playing like Storm. This hand doesn't really do anything, but... They are mulling down to six, which is better than them keeping seven, I guess. As far as snagging home a trophy, but hopefully our opponent doesn't just get no lands. I hate when that happens. I do have a shred of empathy. <laughs> we'll lead on planes to mana tithe, I don't know, a mox or something. We have an upkeep stop still, so we're going to take that away right now. We don't need it. Do you lead on blue, which is fine. We would like to draw just like land, land, land. That is awesome. White land would have been better, but blue land is awesome. Actually, blue land might be fine too, because we can brazen borrower. 
So they are fetching, so they're probably going to play something that we can tithe, or we can just brazen borrow it, depending on what it is. Scrubland, interesting. Play nothing, which is fine. I don't know why they fetched them. We're not going to play Tithe Taker because we want to hold up Mana Tithe and Petty Theft. Those colors make me think maybe they're, they are playing Storm. But we might just flash out Brazen Borrow if they do nothing. All right, they are doing something. Opponent is thinking. Baleful Strix playing around Mana Tithe. That is pretty annoying, and that is a really bad Brazen Borrower target. So I guess it's fine. That is a well sequenced from our opponent. I don't see reason to flash in Brazen Borrower, so I guess we're just going to continue to do nothing. We get Mox Jet, which I will cast. And then I'm going to cast Tithe Taker. Holding up our bounce from Brazen Borrower. So if they play like a scary four mana thing, we can just bounce it. Uh, the only downside is if it's a Planeswalker, they do get to plus it before we get to bounce it, and then we can just mana type them the following turn. We are one land away from Time Warping. Shellock is pretty scary, but it is gonna be a little bit until that that happens, so. Our opponents so far, it looks like they might just be playing like a fair Esper deck with like good cards in it. That's what it looks like so far. Put a card face down. Jite is pretty good, but they can't equip it yet. They do attack us for one, which is fine. I'm just going to bounce GTA probably. Is that a good play, actually? It might be better to bounce. Bouncing? That seems stupid. We are going to Petty Theft their GTA back. Just because we want to play Brazen Borrow next turn, probably. Are they mana typing us? Oh, they have mana type. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> I did not expect that. Uh, we honestly might just time walk ourselves. We kind of need more like things to do, so I'm just gonna time walk ourselves while they tapped out. We need another white source to be able to play two spells in one turn, which is what I want to do. So this isn't the best time warp, but it's okay, I guess. GTA is pretty scary. Us losing Brazen Borrower is also pretty sad. Fear of Blade Hold is pretty bad. We can't do anything with that mana. We are going to attack. I think I have to Winds of Abandon in their Baleful Strix, actually, which feels really bad. But I really don't want them to hit us with GTA. Actually, are we one white off? We're one white off from overloading. I think I'm just going to hold up Mana Tithe, get hit by GTA, and just cry and deal with it. GTA is they played around mana type and they hit us with GTA, which is really felt really bad, but that's okay. We are hurting for a second white source. They're gonna equip GTA, that makes sense. They're going to attack us. Hopefully they play something we can mana tithe. They're just going to kill our tithe taker, that makes sense. It reduces the power. Please, I want to be able to use this mana tithe that you played around. Play your three drop, come on. <laughs> Stop being lame. I played into your mana tithe, play into mine. If you play a two drop, I'll be so mad. Ugh, that's also kind of annoying. Alright, our opponent's rude. We will play Wall of Omens. Again, we need another white source. <laughs> We're 
we're playing 10 weight sources in our deck, so at least we have one. I can't complain that much, but uh, I, I will. They're probably just going to GTA, kill our spirit, and then attack us again. Get more get more counters on GTA. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know why they wouldn't just do it during their turn, though. We do have some good stuff to play once we get white mana. Like, if we get another white source, if they, like, dump their hand here and we draw a white source and we get to overload Winds of Abandon, we should be just fine. It will turn on their Shaldock, though, so that is something to be aware of, but... Attack with Kithian. This means that they can kill wall bones if they want using two GTA counters, which is fine. Again, ideally, they just like dump their hand as like a bunch of dumb creatures, and then we top deck a white source and wrath. Driftwing Cloudscape is pretty annoying for us. We draw a white source. Awesome. So I honestly might just Elspeth. They don't have any counters on Jite, so they could only hit it for one. And then we can wrath them the following turn. The other option is Hero of Bladehold. Puts a huge clock on them. And we can give it, we can plus it next turn. Yeah. I think I'm just going to play Hero of Bladehold. I think that's better than Elspeth on this board. Because they need a kill spell or a counter spell. Please don't counter it. Please just have three laser hand. Okay, cool. And then we can we can just Winds of Abandon them next turn if we want to. Especially with Rank coming down, I'm nervous. Swords of Plowshare is a great play from them. That would have been a reason to Elspeth, I guess, but we had no idea. We aren't taking a ton of damage yet, which is cool. But now they can actually kill our Elspeth if we play it, so we're probably just gonna play Burmes. We are super, super hurting for, for colored mana, unfortunately. I'll say maybe I just play Geist. It comes down this turn. Oh no, it comes down the following turn. Okay, so I'm gonna play Burmes this turn. And then next turn I might play Geist, and then I'll probably wrath them. Do they have a counterspell? They have Venser. Oh, that's so good against us, because we have no white mana at all in our deck. Uh, that's brutal. Okay. We'll see how they end up sequencing. Now they get to flip Kithian. This is really bad. Yeah, we probably just lose this game. We needed to draw... Oh, white sources faster. Um, them them not playing into our mana type was really good by them, and we did play into their mana type, which is unfortunate. Them flipping Kithian makes Winds of Abandon way worse, which I don't like. And now they have a GTA with four counters on it. That's a lot of counters to have in a GTA. So they probably got there. We're gonna keep playing though. How does this work? It's a 4 4. The end of the world. That's fine because we're hopefully going to exile their entire board, ideally. Felidar Retreat. We are one mana short of casting in addition to Geist. I think I'm just going to play Geist and then next turn Winds of Abandon them. Then hopefully we can kill Gideon like that. I think that's better than playing Felidar Retreat. So let's just hold a mana type, which I like. The only downside of us wins of abandoning them is they're gonna get a ton of lands, and they're also like going to be able to use Sheldock. So hopefully what's under Sheldock is not scary. Hopefully it's like a I don't know, land, I guess. <laughs> it's probably not what's gonna be under Sheldock, I'd imagine, but we've had some pretty unlucky Sheldock, so maybe our opponent does too. Good to know that they have mana type and swords of plasher in their deck, though. That's definitely very useful. Comes down this turn, they can't bounce our Geist. They're probably gonna bounce our white source if I had to guess. Let it resolve. 
Assuming they bounce. Oh, they bounce our tapped white source? Why? Why wouldn't you bounce the untapped white source? Maybe they click the wrong one. Hopefully we mana type them here. That would be amazing. They play like Battle Ball. They are going to get a 4-4. Four, four. They have lethal if we don't block. Nine. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they have so much damage. Uh, I were just dead, I'm pretty sure. Because they're going to put... They can attack us for 8, 9. Oh, I don't see a reason to show them in a tithe. Yeah, they have lethal. They got us. Um, I guess we were supposed to wrap that turn then, huh? But they would have gotten a hasty Riftwing Cloud Skate. Like, we, we were still dead, I think. It was unfortunate. We needed a white... A white source... Second white source way, 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 way earlier. And then maybe we were supposed to play Elspeth before... What's it called? So that we didn't get sourced. But... That's okay. Our opponent played well. They played around our Marina type. Now we know they have Mana type in their deck, so we're just going to take it and go to go to game two here. As far as sideboarding, I do like Tithe Taker, so I'm probably going to leave that in. Balance? Look like it would have been really good that game. Um, As a way to kind of like bring the game back. I think I'm just going to take out Usher for that. I think Kithian's better than Usher. No, maybe Usher's better than Kithian. We'll take out Kithian this time, keep an Usher, and we'll we'll just run it back like that. I think the way that we beat them is we have a planeswalker in play and then we balance. I think that's gonna be that's gonna be how we do it. And we can grab it off a of spellseeker. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully our mana's a little bit better this game. We drew a lot of our islands, which is what we needed like the previous game. Again, like that's I took I got an early tundra that was lucky but I literally like from getting that tundra on I was like if I see a single white fetch or a blue fetch I will take it and we didn't see a single one there's 10 of those fetches right there's five or no there'd be eight of them because there would be well no blue how many blue fetches are there it can the blue color can pair with four other colors so that would be four and then the white can pair with four other colors yeah so there's eight other fetches we got one of them I think we, we probably passed one or two in the beginning. Like, I think there was a Scalding Tarn in one of our early packs. But, like, <laughs> we just didn't get to see the fetches that we would have loved to take, so... It's a little unfortunate, but that's okay. Disenchant. What else is in their deck? Oh, yeah, Jite. Yeah, that was just a great... Great hand from our opponent, and they played well. They played around our mana type. Um, if we had like miscalc or something, it would have been really good. But we did not have miscalc, unfortunately. Our opponent is thinking very hard about their sideboard. But in my opinion, I think our, our deck is pretty obvious what we're trying to do. Other than maybe the opposition, the opposition might be like the the sneaky thing that they're not seeing coming. We would like to play first. We will keep this hand. We have turn one giver runes, and then we can turn three monastery mentor. We have double white and we have double blue, which is all I want. <laughs> it's the most broken hand is when we can cast our spells. The opponent begins with seven as well. I'm gonna turn one giver. Rush draw would probably be like a Mox. Although now I don't want to get by Mana Tithe, so Mox would still be an okay draw. Council's Judgment is fine. We're going to attack them for one. Giver Runes can't protect itself like Mom can, so there's no. if you have nothing to protect, there's no reason not to attack just to get one point of damage in. We're going to play our island and pass the turn. We're going to fetch during our insta, which is fine. They get water grave into play. I'm assuming tapped. Maybe they have like brainstorm or something. Yeah, they can. We're good. Hopefully, they play around mana tithe that we don't have in our hand. All right. They're not playing anything. We're going to play around mana tithe. I don't really see a rush. Attack them here. I 
We're going to play our white source in case they strip mine. They're going to want to go for the blue instead. We're going to play Smuggler's Copter, which plays around Mana Tithe. Does not play around Miscalc, however. Do you have Miscalc? I'll be so sad. They have Spell Pierce. Okay, well, not going to play around Spell Pierce. We will play around Tithe, though. Hopefully our opponent does too, and we don't even have Tithe in hand. <laughs> I didn't know they have Spell Pierce in the deck now. Let's see what they play here. Kaya is pretty good, but is fine. Because this means that we guarantee you get down Monastery Mentor. They do get to eat our Giver Bruins, which is a little unfortunate, but I think that's fine. We get Monastery Mentor out. We get to keep leaving up our fake Mana Tithe. Although I think I should have waited, like paused when they played Kaya to see if I wanted to tithe it or not. Because now they're probably very sure that we don't have tithe. Although if we go land, we get Gideon in play, and our board just seems better than theirs. If we don't draw land, we can Council of Judgment something. Get a token. Land is... Actually, I'm pretty confident we're just going to... Council's judgment that over for Gideon. So that lets us pressure, pressure Kaya too, which I like. Like Council's judgment. Like that. I'm going to yield to that. I'm going to yield to that. Land still would have been cool because then we could have played Tight Taker. Although we drew Tight Taker, so maybe not. <laughs> so Gideon. I'm going to attack Kaya because Kaya can still eat our monk tokens, so. And they either have to choose between losing a knight or losing Kaya. So I'll let our opponent make the decision. I'd imagine that they're going to just lose the Kaya, although maybe not. I don't know. It's our opponent's choice. Dealer's choice. Okay, they are going to lose the Kaya. Which makes sense to me. We would love to draw a land and have them not mana type Gideon. That would be our ideal sequence. Opposition would be okay too, as long as they don't counter our opposition. Gta is pretty good. That kind of means that we have to chomp. So again, a land would be kind of our best draw. And they do tap out of white, which means they don't have mana type in their hand. And they already spell pierced us, so I'm not sure what that means. We do have to block. We don't want them getting counters on GTA. GTA is actually very good against our deck, unfortunately, but. I'm gonna block. Hopefully we draw a land. Oh wait, that does work like that, doesn't it? Oh. It's just combat. It's not like combat to a player. Wow, that card's so good. <laughs> They're probably just gonna kill Monastery Mentor if I had to guess. Wow, that was really brutal. GTA was a great card for them to have. GTA kind of just like got rid of Monastery Mentor, and there's nothing we could have did about it. Maybe I shouldn't have blocked then. I don't know. Opposition would have been so good on that board, but we need to play Hero Blade Hold. Should be good with Opposition, hopefully. As long as they don't have a kill spell. Again, a land is still our best draw. Getting Gideon in play seems pretty good. Our opponent is flooding out. Okay, they do a free booter to take one of our two good cards. They get to choose between the opposition that we can play next turn or the Gideon that we could play next turn. Our opponent's deck seems pretty sweet. I think the, the main thing about their deck that I like is they just have really great mana and they're just playing good cards. Unfortunately, Jite, I think, is just like the best card in their deck against our deck, and they got it both games. Like ASAP. So it's a little unfortunate, but that's okay. But Jite Gideon, I think that makes more sense. Um, I'm taking something else. So if we block this knight, we don't get to attack. Oh, what is this? Fencer? All right, yeah, we lost the game. <laughs> they just have so much tempo in play. Unless we get balance, actually. Balance would be a great way to bring this game back. Or spell speaker to grab balance would also be good. That is not either of the spells I just named. 
So I think what we're going to do is play opposition. If we draw balance next turn, we can just wrath the board, which is why I don't super want to play a creature. And then like balance plus tight ticker should be enough to buy us a ton of time. They are hellbent, which I like. They do have a GTA with counters on it. They did draw land, which I like. They're going to F6. They're just going to hit us. Fencer was a great draw from them. It's a shame. I think our deck could beat this deck, but they spell Pierce Star Copter, which was great from them. We played around mana type, but we did not play around spell Pierce. They had GTA. Again, we need it like this turn. Hollow Omens is not what I was looking for. But we're going to play it. Maybe we draw it off the top. Land is not what we wanted, but that does let us play Hero Blade Hold, which is cool. So we're going to wait until they enter combat to see what they're leaving GTA on, because that's what we're going to tap down. Um, they can only kill one of our creatures, so we can get rid of GTA. We actually might be fine from this position. Opposition was a great draw. So yeah, they're just going to kill us now. That makes sense. We're going to opposition down their Bloodstained Mire, just for fun, I guess. <laughs> it's going to die anyway, so. This makes them have to fetch now if they want to grab a land. Yeah, they do. That makes sense. Balance is still looking really good here, if we draw it. We're going to tap down whatever creature has GTA on it. Um, so then they won't get any more GT counters. Uh, we want to do it in their begin combat step. We're going to tap down the knight, take three. So GT for as long as we have a creature in play, GT is dead. I don't know why they did attack. That was weird. Gideon is exactly what we wanted. Just more annoying creatures to put into play. I'm actually going to bring this one back. I think we tap down one of their blue sources during their upkeep. I think that makes sense. We're fine with Gideon taking one. Just what's going to happen. This makes sense. Even if they have a kill spell, we can guarantee tap down Gita, which is what we want. Until they go into combat, and we're going to opposition down their knight. All right, and they just concede. I think from that position, we do win because we're getting another creature every turn from Gideon, so they're slowly going to get choked out of this game. That was very, very fortunate uh, the way that we drew. Opposition was super, super good there. I was definitely defeated. I thought we lost, but we managed to bring it back. Uh, we'll see if we can snag this trophy. I'm going to try super hard. Focus. Uh, now we know they've spell pierced in their deck, which is good to know about. Uh, don't think Metamorph is that good, unfortunately. Uh, Banishing Light does answer everything in their deck, including Jitae, which was kind of like what we were losing to last time. Uh, I do like our deck. I think I think they just need to not have Jitae in their hand, and we're gonna be fine. So I think I'm just gonna run it back. I could see maybe I'm supposed to bring in like Banishing Light or Disenchant over like give her. Give runes or something, but we want creatures in our deck to be good with Honor of the Peer and with um, Opposition, so. All right. Let's see if we get to Tithe our opponent for the first time ever. <laughs> we do have Tithe in our hand, finally. Opponent's upkeep. Not going to do anything. Stop here. They do have a turn one play. They have Giver of Runes. I think we're just going to play Usher of the Fallen. We're just going to try to aggro them out. If they play GT here, I'll cry. So you do have Mana Titan in their hand, but if they don't play Jita here, I'll feel fine. Let's see what they do. They are shocking. If they play G please don't play Jita. Please. 
You're so sexy. Don't play Gita. I hate that card. <laughs> that card makes me sad. Freebooter's fine. They get to take balance, probably. Council's judgment? I'm not really sure. I can't really attack because of Giver Burns, so we'll probably just play Tide Taker next turn. We do need lands. That is very evident from our hand. Maybe we should have mold. I don't know. They did take... Okay. Honestly, I don't hate balancing here. But we also have no lands, so balancing next turn will probably be good as well. I'm just going to play planes and attack. This makes our balance really, really good, and then I can hold up Enatai, which I like. You can just mana type and balance the following turn. They take it, which makes sense. They want to keep one of their creatures um, because I do have balance in my hand. So they can only play a two drop this turn if they do want to, and we they we do have this looming balance hanging over them. Let's see what they do. Can't really play any lands either because we'll just balance. We will mana type that. So that gets another card out of our hand, so we don't have to discard down a balance. I'm assuming they just double attack us. Okay, they attack us with Freebooter. They could probably just get a balance. This gets us Council's Judgment back in our hand. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Uh, we're going to attack. There's no way they block with Giver Runes. We might just play Tithe Taker. Just like keep like throwing our board at them. Balance is actually kind of huge here. We don't have any lands to play, so they can't really play lands. If they commit more stuff to the board, we're just going to kill it. If they play another creature, they have to sack our creature, and we're fine just like trading our creatures super aggressively. Let's see what they play. If they don't play anything, we can make them discard potentially. GTA would be the end of the world. We just don't have GTA for the third game in a row on turn three. Brimaz is pretty good against us on this board. But we could just get like land and then we can play our own Brimaz and we'll be fine. Ancestral is not what we wanted. It's probably the worst card. I think we just have to past the turn. They're going to have Giver Protection. Maybe that was wrong. Maybe I was supposed to attack with Tithe Taker so I can try to get rid of all my creatures. They're just going to give Rimaz Pro every turn, probably, if that it goes. I think I was supposed to attack with Tithe Taker. Ancestral, that's what we want to do. <laughs> that's not nice. We can... Giver's actually kind of huge here because it stops us from just killing all of our own creatures by chumping every turn, which is what we would love to do. They are not giving it protection. Interesting. We will block with Tithe Taker. Wait, we can just... Huh. We have an interesting play here. We can balance next turn. It makes us discard a bunch of cards, though. The issue is Tithe Taker gives us a 1-1. I think I'm going to block like this. Because this makes it so that way if they attack with Brimaz next turn, we do get to just balance them. That's fine. Get Afterlife 1. I'll say our best draw would be an island to Ancestral Vision ourselves. All of Omens is not what we wanted, because we want to get rid of all of our creatures. So we are going to discard a bunch of cards out of our hand, but we have no lands, so. And luckily Brimaz makes it so we can kill our spirit if they do attack with Brimaz. This balance is just, like, really getting a hold on them here. It comes down in three turns, so I don't think I can wait to balance until they 
until that comes down. Let's see what they do. I'm assuming they attack with everything except Giver. Yeah, that makes sense. We will block. Hopefully they don't have mana tithe for balance. That would be the end of the world. But I think we have to go for it here. Oh, we get to play around mana tithe. Hopefully they don't have spell pierce. That would be really bad. If they counter this, we just lose. But I don't think we can't not go for it. They only have three cards in hand. Mana tithe doesn't do it. They need specifically spell pierce. If they got it, they got it. Looks like they don't have it. They're waiting a while. We have to discard only one card, which we're definitely discarding Felder Retreat. We get to eat two of their lands. Mox is actually a great draw there. They have Spell Pierce, they just win. All right, we will pay for it. They might have... Sp <laughs> Mox is an excellent draw. <laughs> that was our ideal draw, probably. That's actually really awesome that we didn't get tithed. They might have Spell Pierce too, but they would probably just cast Spell Pierce if they had it. This makes us discard an extra card. That's probably where they, they tithed us. Should be in pretty good shape, though. I'm going to get rid of the Ancestral. We're going to get rid of Feldar because we don't have any lands. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. That's not what I wanted. How do I undo? Hello? How do I undo? You choose the cards you want. I think I right click the card. Yeah. Okay. I was like, there is a way to undo this. I'm pretty sure. I think we want Brimaz. We can play him next turn. And then I think I want Elspeth. I think it's better than Wall of Omens. So keep those two. Our opponent has to sack a bunch of lands. They have to sack all their creatures. We get back Council's Judgment. They do have what's it called ticking down, which is kind of annoying. They have Ancestral ticking down, but we're in so much better shape. That balance was huge. Balance is so good. <laughs> I'm so glad I took that card. Every time I see it in a pack, I'm like, is it that good? And it is really, really good. We're just going to play Brimaz. It doesn't get spell pierced, and we already saw Mana Tight, so... Did you get to draw cards when this turn? I think it's one more turn. This one. Yeah. So next turn they get to Ancestral. So this game is it's pretty, pretty brutal. Refrain Cloudsgate is fine. I'm gonna play Elspeth and plus. Get a one one. Get another one one off Brimaz. Actually, yeah, this makes sense. Oh no, I probably should have plused it. Because then we would have lethal this turn. Yeah, that was silly. I should have plussed it. I should have done the other plus, because then we would have lethal this turn. Um, now they get to Cloud's Gate before we get to win. Although if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, if they just play a creature and we can Council's Judgment, we also just win. So that would be 6, 7, 8. We get a 1, 1 off of Brimma. So hopefully they just pay 3 mana for like Monastery and Mentor pass a turn. That balance was brutal. Balance was so good. We had no lands in our hand. <laughs> if we didn't have balance, that hand, we would have just lost. Like, they would have just deployed their hand and we would be in so much danger. But now we have Brimaz in play. They have two lands. We have Elspeth in play. That balance was huge. And that, that Mox off the top was great, too. That was very fortunate. So we didn't get tight. Um, we didn't get tight, and they had to get rid of an additional land. That was really awesome. It's not over yet, though. They do have way more cards in hand than us, but we do have way more in play. They do have swords, which is good for them. Looks like they're not playing anything yet. We cannot cast Opposition. I'm just going to plus Elspeth. Elspeth lets us deal four, and then we have Lethal the following turn. Because they're probably going to bounce Elspeth this turn. So I think getting more damage in makes more sense. Like, if we did this already, they would be in... They'd be dead, but, you know, no one's perfect. It does mean we have lethal next turn if they just cloud skate and then do nothing. Because we can play Elspeth plus give something flying. 
We can play around Spell Pierce here, which is awesome. They have like land Jite, that would be pretty annoying. But they would still go down to one. We could just ex exile their creature. Actually, that doesn't work because we can crew copter. The vigilance on the cat soldier is actually pretty nice. Oh wait, Cloud's Gate isn't this turn, is it? Wow. Okay. That's even better. So we are going to try and go for it. We are going to crew Smuggler's Copter off of this soldier. Done. We're going to plus Elspeth on our cat. They probably have Venser if I had to guess. Don't have Venser. They have a kill spell? Do you have Hero's Downfall? That's fine. We get to loot off of Smuggler's Copter, and they go down to one. Oh, we don't want to crew. So we get to get rid of this planes. That's doing nothing in our hand. We can get rid of Opposition, which is double blue. We're probably not going to be able to cast that. We will yield. We would like to draw and discard. We're going to discard the planes, and then probably just play out the island. This makes it so that way if we draw island, we can opposition. Uh, and if we draw Gideon, we can play it. I think that's better than just keeping a random island in my hand. Or keeping a random... Uh, yeah, keeping a random island in my hand. They do get to Cloud Skate. They can eat our soldier. They can bounce our Elspeth, which is what I think they're going to do. We have a bunch of different options. They are at one, so if we hit them with literally anything, they die. But they're not just dead yet. So that is something to keep in mind. See what they do. And bounce Elspeth. But they need something else in addition. Because they can't attack. Otherwise, we just kill them with Copter. Your opponent's definitely under pressure here. Yeah, they do both they do bounce Elspeth, that makes sense. Kai would be a great draw for them. They can get rid of our soldier token and then start gaining life. Oblivion Ring on Copter? That doesn't do it. That is fine. We can always Council's Judgment to get that back. They can't attack us. I think I like, so I don't want to get spell pierced, but I think I have to get spell pierced here if they have it, because we could counsel judgment, get back our smuggling copter, but that means we can't attack this turn, whereas Elspeth threatens their life total this turn. So hopefully they don't have spell pierce. Even if they do, it's okay. They do have it. That's fine. We, we might've been supposed to play around it um, and just counsel judgment their oblivion ring. But that's okay. They do get Sheldock, which is scary. That is a great one for our opponent. Uh, actually, I think we are supposed to counsel judgment. Plays around, plays around spell pierce, and then we have two creatures that can kill them the following turn. I think that just makes sense. Ooh, hopefully they attack with one of their creatures. That would be awesome. Please attack, please. Oh, you're so weak. Uh, I think we got them. So we can bounce the token, and then we can Council's Judgment Riftwing, and then attack for lethal. They need days. So when we don't want to get countered is Brazen Borrower. I'm going to Petty Theft the token. They need days, or they're just dead. Council's Judgment, aiming Riftwing, attack them for one. We'll attack them for one. I'm not sure what they could have. All right. Our opponent says GG's. That game was insane. 
Wow, we barely had it. If they were at, I, I think the slight misplay we made that game is we should have plussed. We should have done the other plus on Elspeth, just to get like an extra three points of burn. Um, then they would have died like way faster. I wasn't even thinking about the fact that that the clock would have been way faster. But that that balance was so key. No other card in the entirety of Magic could have brought that game back other than balance from the way that our hand looked from the way that their board was. I'm so, so, so happy they didn't take balance with their their um their human. What's it called? The one that they get to steal non-creature from their hand that they played. Um they they were probably assuming that if we just drew a land, we would just exile and get it back, which we would have, but we just never drew any land, so balance just kept getting better and better. Um weirdly enough, them playing um Brimaz was great because we could kill all of our X ones using using the one ones that is not optional. You have to put a one one into play off of Brimaz. So we could wrath our board, which then just made balance kill the entire board, make them sack two lands, and then we did discard like well, like three cards, that's fine. Um and the mocks off the top to play around the to play around the um what's it called? To play around the white days to play around the mana tithe. and then it it we didn't they had to sack an extra land because it was a land we had to discard one less card because we got to play mox it was just that beginning sequence was so rough and we played to our outs and we it worked and we trophied i'm very excited i think that the deck was like medium good draft but i think that we didn't tell we just played to our outs, kept playing, tried our best, and it just happened to work work out this time, which is exactly what you need to do. When everything starts falling apart, you just have to stay focused, focus on what you can do, what are your outs, what can I draw that lets me win? How do I win this game? How, what gives me the best chance of winning this game? And then trying to follow it as best as you can, not get frustrated, react to new information. That's what we did. I'm very, very satisfied with this league. As much as I liked... I don't get me wrong, I do like playing um broken cards in my deck, but this deck was way more fair and I think that we just played well. We got super, super lucky, but we also played well, which is what made the luck work. If we didn't play well, if we just conceded after we were in a really, really disfavorable situation both games, uh, we would have lost out on this trophy. So I think it's just another signal to me to not tilt when things are going wrong. Play to your outs, focus and uh and have fun. It's a game. It's not like this is um surgery or something and you're like killing people. This is Magic the Gathering. Uh if you guys are new here, feel free to subscribe. I'm gonna make more vintage cube videos every day until Vintage Cube closes, which is only three days left. And then after that I'm gonna stop uploading. So I'm not gonna flood your inbox with like magic lore videos, top ten I don't care. I really only like Vintage Cube. I will sometimes play other things, but I might not just film them. I'm a student. I'm kind of busy, but uh, this was really, really fun. I'm glad you guys had to be here with me, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.